Hello everybody, this is Dan Miller for Bluegrass Unlimited Magazine and today I want to do a little bit on the banjo having to do with beginning improvisation on the banjo. I did a series, like an eight part series about improvisation a while back and I talked about different approaches and um, I used the guitar for an example on all of those and so I just wanted to carry that over for the banjo in case you um, want to see how that applies here. Now, the first thing we always said was the answer is always in the chord. So if you just play notes out of the chord, you're going to be safe. It's the fake it till you make it stage. You're not going to be playing the best solo you could ever play. But if you don't know the song, you're at a jam session, um, you can just do your rolls over your chords. And remember um, in the improvisation videos I did before, I said the first thing you want to do is not only just play notes out of the chord when uh, the song changes to that chord, but you want to kind of phrase what you're doing the way you hear the song being phrased. And I said back then that um, after you learn the chord changes, the next easiest thing to pick up on is kind of the cadence or the phrasing, the way the singer's phrasing the song or the way other instrumentalists are phrasing. If you can pick up on that, you can pick up on that with your ear a lot faster than you can pick up on the exact melody. So the first fake it till you make it stage. It's just when you're at the jam, roll over the chords. And um, you can modify your roll patterns based on the way you hear the phrasing of the song. Um, that might take some experience to get used to. That's okay. First off, you could just play a forward roll over the whole thing, or a forward backward roll, or an alternating roll. Throwing in some uh, pinches, you know, every once in a while might help. Um, let me give an example of this. Let's say I'm at a jam, somebody calls out, I saw the light, right? And I've never played it before. Maybe I don't even know the song, okay? In the key of G, the song starts going around, and I can, by the time it's my turn, I've picked up what the chord changes are. So when it comes my time, I can just roll over those chord changes, holding down my chords. Uh, I'm going to use open G, easiest thing. I'm going to use this first position C, and then I'm going to probably uh, take a hold of this D right here, this D chord, when the D, D part comes around. It's a quick D part. Okay, so let me just give an example. I saw the light only using the notes of the chord. And again, it's not going to sound exactly like the song because the song has melody notes that are not in the chord, but we'll address that in a minute. This is this fake it till you make it stage. So here we go. Again, not the greatest solo you could ever take, but it'll get you by in the situation until you learn the song better. Just rolling over the chords, changing your various patterns. I'm not going to tab that out because I just randomly kind of heard the song in my head and played roles that kind of fit what the cadence was I was hearing in my head. So practice that. You can come up with your own way to do that, rolling over the chords. And now let's look at the next step. Okay, as we talked about in the improvisation uh, video series, the next thing you might want to look at is your major pentatonic scale. The next thing after your three notes of the chord, you're going to play the major pentatonic, and as we discussed in those videos, play the major pentatonic of each chord related to that key. You're not changing keys because all of the notes of the major pentatonic scale in a 1-4-5 progression all the notes in the G major pentatonic, all the notes in the C major pentatonic, and all the notes in the D major pentatonic are still all in the G scale. So we're not leaving the key. We're just thinking about it in a different way. Okay. Um, so the notes I'm going to add in uh, to the G chord um, are the E note. There, there, and the A note. Okay. Um, the notes I'm going to add to C. Um, is going to, are going to be a D note I can add and an A note. A is the 6th, D 
D is the second. We're, those are the two notes we're adding to the three notes of the chord. And again, in G, it's the E note, which is the sixth, and the A note, which is the second. And then with D, we can add the E note, which is the second, and we can add the B note, which is the sixth, okay? Um, lots, lots of song melodies are just going to use those five notes, so we're going to be cl getting closer to the melody if we use those notes. Um, a lot of Earl Scruggs banjo licks come out of those notes, um, with one exception, and then we'll move on to the next scale that we covered, which is the major blues. The major blues is going to take the major pentatonic scale and add one note, which is the flat third. Okay, so if, if I do this slide, uh, this uh, slide, typical, that's going to be going from an A, which is in the major pentatonic scale, to that B flat, which makes it a major blues. Now, if I sometimes I'll slide all the way up to B, and there you're still staying major pentatonic, you're not going outside of that. But if you add that B flat, which is a two to three, then you're still good, but you're just changing your scale from major pentatonic to major blues to get that bluesy feel in there, which a lot of bluegrass tunes have in them. So if you, if you analyze a lot of your Earl Scruggs standard banjo licks, you'll see that the majority of them are going to come out of the major pentatonic and or major blues scales. And a lot of times we don't think about scales on the banjo until we get into like melodic style playing. But if you, if you um, learn how to play your G open chord and then add the E note there and the A note there, and if you learn how to play C and add a D note, add an A note, if you learn how to play add a D and you can add a B note or you can add an E note, um, you'll get more flavor to your music without overcomplicating it too much. And again, if you analyze a lot of your standard licks, and rolls and the way they're applied on the five string banjo and scrug style, you'll see that's what's going on. Anyway, so let me play I Saw the Light again, um, and this, this time I'll be closer to the melody because the melody is pretty much out of uh, the major pentatonic scale. I'll, I'll throw a two three slide in there which will go into that major blues and uh, so you'll hear that. Um, but this is going to get pretty close to the melody because the melody is made up of these notes and I'm going to add them in when I hear they should be played. And so here we go with I Saw a Light. First time when it was just chords, I just played that, but this time I'm adding the E note and I'm going to that A to B flat slide. So otherwise, it's it's pretty much the same. I'm adding notes from the major pentatonic and then that one major blues notes. When I go to C, I'm adding that A note, which is a sixth scale degree of the C, and that's in the C major pentatonic, okay? Um, and I'm going back to G. For D, I'm hammering down. So I'm hammering on the D note. Two, three pull off, which again is major blues pulling off to major pentatonic. The B flat makes it major blues. That A note is in the major pentatonic over G. And then I did that slide. You could do this without hitting the E. Have the D note open, and again that's all major blues. Even if I went down here and played that E note, that lick is still major blues. So in that entire song I'm just playing major blues. There's much of it is just simply major pentatonic when I add that B flat it's major blues. So if you will sort of kind of analyze your Scruggs licks 
in the in the sense of uh, what notes in there are major pentatonic or ma and or major blues, it just might help you wrap your head around your licks and your solos in a different way. Um, and you're really not adding many notes to just the chord. To, for major pentatonic, you're just adding two notes, the second scale degree and the sixth scale degree relative to the root of the chord. So, um, you know, for years and years I never thought about my banjo licks that way, but um, after I kind of learned about these scales when I was studying guitar and then went back to the banjo and just kind of looked at what I was playing most of the time, it ended up being major blues or, or major pentatonic. Um, so that was kind of helpful for me when I started thinking about improvising. I could fall back on that and it would still sound pretty good even if I didn't know the song, if I threw uh, on top of just the chord tones, I threw the major pentatonic and major blue, blue notes on top of those chord tones. It seems to work out pretty good. So give it a try and uh, we'll see you next time. This is Dan Miller for Bluegrass Unlimited Magazine.